Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Ed. When Tammy was a kid, her and her sister would often use Ouija boards, and it always seemed that they would end up communicating with the same spirit who was named Ed. Ed apparently wasn't super nice because he would continually threaten their younger brother during this time, and he was never with them during the times that they were using the board, so it was definitely weird. Eventually, they got creeped out enough that they got rid of the board and just put Ed behind them. A few years later, when their little brother got older, he had used a Ouija board with his friend a couple of times, and he came home to tell his older sisters a story that had him freaked out. He explained that every time him and his friend used the board, there kept being a spirit named Ed who was threatening him. Apparently their mother ended up banning the use of Ouija boards in their house, which really is the right move. In our number 9 spot today we have the book. Okay, so what if I told you that someone out there really thought it was a good idea to write a book that is for children, but it tells them how to summon demons? I mean, listen, for years there's been urban legends like Bloody Mary and Charlie Charlie, which of course tell us instructions on how to summon those respective demons, but urban legends are part of being a child. It's spooky stories to share amongst friends, but this book really takes things to an entirely new level. Many who are more well versed in the worlds of witchcraft and the paranormal have explained that this book, written by Aaron Layton, is basically a grimoire. It contains 72 different demons that can be conjured by those who read it for their own personal gain, which is basically the definition of black magic. The book not only includes these sort of cute drawings of creepy demons, but it also includes the symbols for each demon, which some have warned is also a very bad sign. In our number 9 spot today we have The Room. This story comes from an anonymous source, but we'll call them Alex. Alex Alex and their fiance, who we'll call Sam, were given a Ouija board that their friend had apparently found on the side of the road, which I feel like is the worst place to find a new Ouija board. Alex and Sam decided to use it one night and began to ask questions. They asked who was with them and if they were an angel, demon, or spirit. It replied that their name was Mo and that they were a demon by your creation. Alex and Sam were obviously freaked out and just asked a few more simple questions, like what is your favorite poster of ours on the wall? Mo replied with bloody mess. Alex and Sam had a kiss photo with Gene Simmons on it that had blood everywhere on it. Alex pointed to that poster and asked, this one? Mo said yes. Alex and Sam had a few skeleton heads that sat on their TV, so they asked Mo to move the skeleton heads so that they could have proof Mo was real. Mo said to close their eyes, so they did. A few seconds later, all of the skulls on the TV had moved to be facing them. Only Sam and Alex were in the room at the time and they had been sitting right next to each other, which would have made it impossible for one of them to be pranking the other. In our number 7 spot today we have Niccolo Paganini. Niccolo was a professional violinist who was born in 1782. His parents began to send him to lessons when he was just 5 years old and by age 15 he was already touring the world because he was so talented. What's interesting about Niccolo and his story, other than his obvious musical genius however, is the rumors surrounding his talent and subsequent recognition. According to some, people People believe that his own mother summoned the devil in order for her son to be the extreme talent that he is. There are many modern diagnoses that could potentially explain some of what made Niccolo so talented, and I mean, we all know quite well that sometimes people are just born with extreme talent, but of course in the early 1800s people in their imagination certainly ran wild. The final reason why people believe he may have made a deal with the devil is because shortly before his death he was quite sick. The doctors had a feeling he was nearing death, so they sent in a priest to pray over him. When he first saw the priest, it is said that he freaked out and sent the priest away. Many people believe that him pushing the priest away was only a confirmation of the fact that he was working with the devil. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Lady Ghost Demon. This story comes from the Reddit user Seven Legs Spider, and they really just dive in. Basically, for several years, Spider saw what they thought was just a lady ghost every night at the door of the closet. It. it happened for so long that Spider just got used to it and even started saying goodnight to her. Spider says she didn't look bad or rotten, she was just a lady with pale skin and dark hair. Anyway, after a few years of this, Spider finally tells a friend at school about the lady. He of course didn't believe the story right away, but the next day at school he tells Spider that this lady tried to hurt him while he was sleeping. Now, Spider didn't believe the friend and thought he was just playing a prank. Some more time goes by and Spider decides to tell another friend about the lady, and the same same thing happens where the next time she comes and tells Spider that the lady had tried to hurt her while she was sleeping. The first friend and the second friend 
didn't know each other, so it's not like they could have been conspiring, which made Spider believe his first friend was telling the truth. Then, a while after that, Spider is on a video chat with a friend and they are talking about the paranormal when they both see something run across the screen. They chalk it up to being a glitch and Spider starts telling this friend about the lady and then Spider begins to get extremely dizzy like they're about to pass out. After it goes away, Spider tells their friend that they're okay and the friend replies that they were out of it for at least a full minute and that he could feel that someone was there trying to hurt Spider. I'm In the end, I'm just really glad that Spider and all of the friends ended up being okay and I really hope they found a way to get rid of that demon lady. In our number 5 spot today we have the meditation. This story comes from someone online who starts off by explaining that they accidentally summoned a demon once and it was a huge mistake. They say that it all started when they were meditating with some stones that a friend had given them. They say that the stones were polished and given to them in a medicine bag. When they went to meditate they were holding four in each hand just letting their mind wander when they felt something or someone slam into their back. After this they heard demonic laughter and a bunch of banging upstairs when there shouldn't have been anyone up there. They immediately blew out their candle and left the house. When they returned to the house later they explained that this is when they started to see shadow crawlers all over the walls. The strange occurrences continued as they would hear the sound of children laughing in their home despite no children being there and things would suddenly disappear only to be found later in places that had already been checked. They finished this story by saying that they ended up fleeing the house one night and burning it down never to look back. I'm gonna be honest, not sure about the whole burning the house down thing. Seems maybe a little illegal, but I guess all is fair in the world of demonology. In our number 4 spot today we have Zozo. This story comes from the reddit user Archaic Alchemy who we'll call A. When A was 22 they were staying with their sister and one night they had a couple good friends over to hang out and play around with a Ouija board which is always the start of a good demon story. A had read about people encountering an entity called Zozo and A really just wanted some proof that things exist beyond our physical realm so they really wanted to use the Ouija board. Everyone places their hand on the planche and A calls out to Zozo. It took a few attempts before anything happened, but then the planchette began to move in figure eights. No matter what was asked, it just kept moving in this pattern until it finally spelled out M-A-M-A. A kept asking who they were talking to and eventually they spelled out Zozo and then things really escalated. The planchette was taken to the letters to spell out kill you and when A asked who they spelled out one of the friends names. They didn't take it seriously and kept asking more questions and one friend made the mistake of insulting Zozo. The planchette begins frantically moving through the alphabet backwards over and over before it stops. Then the energy in the room completely drops and A knows that this means that Zozo has manifested itself. Suddenly A begins to laugh maniacally with no control over it. A could feel Zozo's presence inside and could feel Zozo turning all of this hatred and anger towards the friend that had been named before. A's emotions suddenly completely switched and they began crying uncontrollably before again suddenly snapping back to anger. A's head turns involuntarily to look at the friend with a menacing grin as A pushes the planchette towards this friend. The friends decide it's rightfully time to leave and shortly after they left, A felt like they regained control again and Zozo's presence had disappeared. I'm very glad that nothing even crazier happened and that Zozo wasn't able to end up harming this friend in the end. In our number 3 spot today we have Giuseppe Tartini. Okay, so this story is one that is kind of similar to Nicolo's but even more strange. Giuseppe was an Italian violinist and composer who lived during the 1700s. He went on to compose a song called The Devil's Trill Sonata and not only um and not only this, but he also claimed to wake up one night to find Satan sitting on the edge of his bed playing the violin. Seems as though the devil really likes violins, apparently. What's extremely curious is that after this alleged encounter, it is said that Giuseppe's violin skills hit heights never seen before. He was able to suddenly play extremely complicated trills that are impossible for most musicians. Apparently even today the sonata is too difficult for many musicians to play, which is why people believe that perhaps this story really was true. In our number 2 spot today we have the grey skin demon. This story comes from Pink Magic 
chick724 on Reddit, and it is about a night that they had a few years ago while still in college. Pink Magic's best friend of many years was in town, so they went out for a dinner to catch up and spend some time together. They of course ended up getting a bit caught up, as best friends do, and before they know it it's around 2am and definitely time for them to head home. Pink Magic's friend was the one who drove, so they headed off to Pink Magic's house. They're at an intersection waiting for the light to turn green when Pink Magic turns their head and looks out the window into the car next to them. This is when she sees the person next to them is looking directly back at them, but this person has grey skin, completely black eyes with no white, and they're smiling but their teeth are long and sharp. Whoever or whatever this thing is will not break eye contact. Pink Magic tries to scream, but no sound will come out, I've had that nightmare before, and eventually the friend sees this creature too and immediately speeds out of there. To this day, neither of them like to talk about it and neither of them are quite sure what exactly they witnessed. In our number one spot today we have Johann George Faust. According to the stories passed down about this man, it is said that he was an alchemist and astrologer who lived in Germany during the 1500s. It is said that in his plight to become the smartest man in the world while also enjoying as many earthly pleasures as possible, he summoned the help of a demon named Mephistopheles. I thought that that was just one of the cats from Cats, but apparently not. Anyways, there are terrible stories about how cruel and truly evil this man was, and as a professor, it is said he looked down on everyone else because he thought he was smarter than them. Local priests apparently believed that he had actually made a deal with the devil, and that his pet dog was actually a demon who was able to shapeshift. What's most interesting about this is that during his life, he did publish several grimoires, and in 1540, while conducting some sort of alchemaic experiment, his laboratory exploded. Starting off in our number 10 spot we have Theophilus of Adena. Okay, so to start off this list today, we are taking it a little bit back all the way to 538 AD. Theophilus of Adena was a cleric in the Roman Catholic Church. So basically, one day he was elected to become the new bishop, but he ended up denying the offer as it is said that he wanted a more priestly sort of position instead of one with all of that power and responsibility. It is said that he wanted the position of archdeacon, which would have seen him controlling where the donation money went. So apparently, in past Passing on this bishop position, he thought that if he gave this bishop position to his rival, then his rival should at least be grateful enough to give him the position he wanted. But of course, that did not happen. The new bishop gave away the seat that Theo wanted and instead gave him the position of being a humble cleric. This made Theo super angry and this is when he thought that maybe the church isn't as holy as he once thought they were. This is when he decided to summon the help of Satan. He ended up signing a contract with Satan in his own blood. He denounced Jesus and the Virgin Mary and it is said that with the help of Satan he was once again voted into the bishop position and this time he accepted. At this point in time it is said that he felt so guilty he confessed to this deal with the devil and the priest who he confessed to decided that they should burn the blood signed contract. For a second Theo looked up but then suddenly he collapsed and died. Many people believe that it was because he had broken his contract with Satan. In our number 9 spot today we have Woken Up. This story comes from someone named Justin and one night Justin and some friends decided to try their hand at contacting the spirit world through a Ouija board. They began to ask questions but instead of the planchette moving to certain letters, it began to move to all four corners of the board making a sort of X before it just started to go in circles. Justin and his friends decided to call it a night with the board, but not too long after this day, Justin decided to try again with a different friend. The planchette began to move in strange patterns again, but this time Justin said it felt like some sort of hex. Later that night as he was sleeping, he all of a sudden out of nowhere felt some sort of forceful hand grab his arm, which of course jolted him awake. Once awake, he couldn't see anyone or anything around him and everyone in his house was peacefully asleep. In our number 8 spot today we have Aleister Crowley. This man is quite well known for being the leader of an occult group and this really does stem back even into his childhood. It is said that quite early on Aleister started calling himself the Beast and the Antichrist and he is even quoted as saying that God and Satan fought over his soul. In one of his books he wrote, quote, I was in the death struggle with self. God and Satan fought for my soul, those three long hours. God conquered. Now I have only one doubt left. Which of the twain? 
slain was God. Many people believe that perhaps he made a deal with Satan, but it is possible that these are just rumblings based on Alistair's teachings and beliefs. In our number 7 spot today we have The Basement. This story comes from someone named Vince and it has to do with a time he played with a Ouija board. He didn't really expect much to happen and was just sort of going along with it, but during the time using the board, the lights began to flicker and the air around Vince and his friends got quite cold. This is when they knew that something more serious was going on. The demon began to communicate with them through the board and it told them its name, which Vince says seems like a sort of Russian name. When they asked how the dark spirit got there, they explained that they had been killed. Vince explains that he and his friends took a break from the board, but they didn't remember to close the circle before they left, which if you're not familiar with Ouija boards, is a huge mistake. Once they all returned back to the basement where they left the board, they could feel the heavy energy in the room, and they came to find that everything was in complete disarray. Books were thrown about, things were sprawled on the floor, but the only thing that hadn't been touched was the board, which still sat perfectly still in the center of the room, just how they had left it. Victor ends his story by saying, quote, Upon looking at a mirror that we had nearby, the eye of the Ouija board was moving sporadically in its reflection. In our Number six spot today, we have the text. Okay, so this story isn't like others on this list, and it's one of the strangest I've ever heard. So basically, this person who was, you know, on a dating app receives a text message one day from one of the guys that they were talking to that says, quote, I've been thinking about summoning Satan to impress you. Okay, personally, I would run the other way, but turns out these are texts some people are just waiting around to receive. When they followed up the text, the person said again, quote, No, I'm not kidding, unless I told you when I was drunk, I legitimately sold my soul to him in January 2013. Turns out this guy really meant it. Of course, this person needed to know more, and as it turns out, they got the full story. So basically, this guy explained the entire procedure of selling your soul. He said that it's simple, you just have to write a letter, sign it in your blood, perform a sort of ritual, and then some sort of physical mark will show up on your body, like a scratch, and according to this guy, your wish has just come true. Apparently after this guy had done all of that, he said that he laughed in a voice that wasn't his own, and since then, all of his desires have been coming true. This story is weird, but apparently it really is that easy. Definitely wouldn't recommend trying it though, just in case, you know? In our number 5 spot today we have The Entity. This story starts off hot when the storyteller explains that they have used a Ouija board and since doing so, they clearly have opened their home up to some sort of evil entity who hasn't exactly been kind. They say, quote, it started out with that feeling like you're being watched and doors are closing and you hear footsteps on the hardwood when you're home alone, and it progressed slowly into being kept awake by something shaking the bed or pulling off your covers, sometimes even whispering your name. The board would disappear for days on end, then show up in places you never would have put it. I became obsessed with it. Then it was a black mass in the corner of the room or the silhouette of a man watching you from the doorway. After that, it escalated pretty quickly. I had my hair pulled, fingers pricked, scratched. They go on to explain that sometimes while they're trying to sleep, they find themselves unable to move and can feel the entity whispering in their ear in what they say is Latin. They explain that they have since had their house blessed and are hoping that this keeps the demon at bay. In our number 4 spot today we have Jack Parsons. Jack was a man who was born just a few years prior to the Wright brothers flying the first airplane and being born at a time like that had him growing up dreaming of and reading sci-fi novels about rocket ships taking people to space. It is said that this love of rocket ships and these dreams of going to space are what led to him summoning the devil in order to make a deal. Jack wanted to sell his soul in exchange for a rocket ship. Ship. This deal didn't end up working, but Jack continued to study science as he grew older. Later in his life, he stumbled upon the teachings of Aleister Crowley that we talked about before, and this is when he tried his hand at summoning things again. This time, he tried to summon a goddess named Babylon that was said to possibly help men get to the moon one day. Technically, in some ways, it worked because Jack Parsons ended up helping create the jet fuel that is said to still be used today. Maybe it was the deal with the devil, maybe it was the goddess, or maybe it was just good old passion and drive that did it. I guess it all depends on what you believe. In our number 3 spot today we have The Mistake. This story starts off with the storyteller and their wife and this new home that they had moved into. They both noticed some weird things happening around the house and this led to them getting a Ouija board in the hopes that maybe they could get some answers as to what may be happening here. What they didn't realize before using the board, which is pretty common, is that these boards open the door to communication for anyone. Anything lurking on the other end can answer the call and sometimes it's not the 
the spirit you're hoping for. While using the board, they ended up contacting some sort of entity that didn't give them very clear answers and things were feeling kind of vague. Near the end of their Ouija experience, they had the planchette just suddenly fly off the board despite neither of them touching it. After this experience, however, things got so bad that the pair had to break their lease and move. They explained that there were radios and TVs turning on by themselves all the time, they would find taps running when no one had left them like that, they could hear disembodied voices around their home, objects were moving, and the storyteller's wife even said that she had found the storyteller possessed one night. But. He has no memory of it. In our number two spot today, we have the artist. Back in 1677, an artist named Christoph Heisman was working on a castle in Austria. He was so talented at his job that he had been commissioned by the nobles to do this work. There were rumblings about how he may have sold his soul to the devil, but no one was sure of it until it is said that Christoph confessed. He said he had nine years prior and that he regretted it very much now and actually wanted an exorcism. They demanded to know if he was a practicing witch, but in the end, it was decided that he was not, and that instead the devil just had a very strong hold on him. The local priest began giving Christoph exorcisms, and during these sessions, Christoph explained that he had these intense visions where he was coming face to face with the devil who was in the form of a dragon. The dragon was holding the contract that held Christoph's soul, and this is when he was able to rip it out of the dragon's talons. When he woke up, it seemed as though he was cured. After this, he began painting pictures of the devil, and he even painted a story with multiple panels that told the story of how he sold his soul and how they helped him get it back. In our number one spot today, we have This Is Not A Game. This story is said to have taken place over a decade ago, and it starts off when the storyteller's sister had some friends over and they were in the basement watching a scary movie when they decided to start playing around with the Ouija board. Things weren't going exactly as they anticipated, and they all started getting frustrated at the board and began to hurl some insults toward it, calling it fake and things like that. At this point, they turned their attention back to the movie and away from the board, but it soon became clear that someone was in fact listening. All of a sudden the lights and all of the electricity goes out and it's just pitch black. The TV suddenly turns back on, but it's just blaring static. The TV shuts off again and turns back on, but it's just a black screen. Suddenly words appear on the screen that reads, this is not a game anymore. They all ran out of the house as quickly as they could and that was definitely the last time any of them touched a Ouija board. It isn't exactly clear who or what they summoned, but whatever it was, it certainly was not playing around. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have The Dreams. This is a story from somebody named Jake P, and they wrote, quote, My buddy and I found a Ouija board at my girlfriend's house. We were really bored, so we went to this graveyard by my house to see if it would actually work. As suspected, nothing happened. We brought the board back to my house and didn't think anything of it. I feel like that's like the classic story. Just when the Ouija board hears you talking smack. That's when things always start to go crazy though. Jake continues on saying, quote, The next day, strange things began happening. Out of nowhere, my friend started having sleep paralysis every time he spent the night at my house, despite never having it before. The first time he saw a tall woman with long black hair standing in the corner of the room facing the wall. The next time he was asleep on the couch and he saw the same woman standing at my open door looking directly into my room. I don't know what demon lady they summoned, but I hope they did everything they could to get rid of her. Sounds an awful lot like the bent neck lady, and we all know how well that went. In our number nine spot today, we have Joe. Joe isn't necessarily the first name that comes to my mind when making a list of spooky demons, but this story that was posted on Reddit might just make me think a little differently. They explained that a few months ago, one of their friends brought over a Ouija board. There were around five of them at this sleepover, and they all began playing around with it and asking questions, and that is when they met Joe. After about an hour of questions and answers with Joe, one of the girls asks, Joe, are you a bad spirit? Joe answered, N-O, okay. That's good. But then Joe spelled out H-I-M. The girls asked him who he was talking about and that's when he spelled out the words he's coming and started to spell out Zozo, which if you aren't familiar is one of the worst Ouija board demons you could possibly encounter. That ended up being the end of the Ouija board experience for the girls that night because how terrifying, but they decided in the morning to try again. This time they began speaking to someone who apparently claimed to be Joe's wife. They asked her if Joe was a bad spirit 
to which she quickly replied, Y-E-S. In our number eight spot today, we have the dog. This story starts off with the storyteller who we'll call Alicia and her friends playing with a Ouija board in the backyard. She explains that they did end up contacting someone and this is when one of the friends who was also there decides that it would be a good idea to insult the name of this entity. I don't know about you, but I certainly would never risk it. I'm not trying to be haunted for the rest of my life and my afterlife just because I thought I was smug. Anyway, when the friend throws this insult out, the fence behind them immediately starts to rattle. This was enough to convince them that it was time to pack up and head back inside. They all headed for the door, but Alicia's dog stopped at the bottom of the stairs, which was already unusual behavior. When they turned to look at the dog, they found him standing there just snarling, looking at something that he could see out in the darkness. I'm sure hoping that the person learned not to insult people who lay on the other side. In our number 7 spot today we have Blanche. This story comes from the reddit user Turtleshell Magic and it involves their friends M and L. So one night the three of them were at M's house and decided to crack open the good old Ouija board for a little spooky fun. They contacted some sort of spirit whose name was Blanche and who lived sometime in the 1800s and everything was going well until M asked Blanche how they died and she replied with the word killing. M asked how they had been killed. And Blanche said, not I. From there, everything started to get really heavy and the room just like felt different. All of a sudden, the board was ripped from their hands and went flying across the room. They stopped playing immediately, but I don't think that they closed everything properly. After this incident, Em's mom passed away just a week after from an illness that no one knew she had. Not long after this, Ella's mom was hospitalized and then shortly after that, Turtle Shell's mom had to have emergency surgery. Maybe this was all just some horrible, horrible coincidence, but Turtle Shell says that since then they have experienced things that they think are directly related to what happened that night. Things like hearing voices, dark shadows, hearing footsteps. They find themselves wondering if they're still haunted, despite it having been nine years since that night. In our number six spot today, we have the devil. This is a story that is actually the one that caused this person to swear off Ouija boards for the rest of their life. They say the experience was so terrifying it made them completely lose interest. They explain that halfway through their session in this particular circumstance, they ended up contacting a new spirit who claimed to be the devil. I personally would like to hang up that call for sure, especially when this person explains that the spirit seemed to be annoyed that it was being disturbed. Like, so sorry, no problem, I'll go. The storyteller explains that after receiving several messages from the spirit that said, please stop and then stop, which for the record, I would have listened to the first time, but apparently they just kept going because they say that suddenly the temperature dropped just like you see in the movies. From here, the spirit gave them a message that read, if you do not stop now, I will fill the room with the most evil spirits. They definitely took that one seriously and decided it was best to stop and simply has never gone back. In our number five spot today, we have the thrifting find. One day, this Reddit user found a real old school wooden Ouija board at a thrift store. I probably would have run in the opposite direction, but they ended up purchasing it. Later that evening, they and a friend decided to try it out and asked a few questions, but never got a response. They of course got bored and left the Ouija board out on the bed and headed out of the house to go and get some snacks. This was all fine until they came back to the house. When they got back, they realized that the planchette was now moving, but completely on its own. The word foul was being spelled out over and over again, and the two just stared at it in absolute awe. Eventually, they grabbed the board, broke it in half, and covered it with salt before they got rid of it in a safe place. I definitely think that experience was probably the last time they ever ever used a Ouija board. In our number four spot today, we have Persistence. This story is from someone with a username, Amara Lachey, and they wrote, quote, my cousin was heading to a party with a Ouija board in the trunk of her car for all of us to use. On the way to the party, she got in a car wreck. She was fine, but her car was totaled. So obviously, instead of going to the party, she went back home. When she opened her closet to get ready for bed, the board was somehow back in the closet. She burned it after that. Honestly, that is the only truly good response to having something like that happen. I'm just glad she was okay and hopefully that board never came back again. In our number three spot today, we have signs. This story starts out like many of the others on this list. A group of friends just casually trying their hand at contacting the paranormal. You know, that stuff that most of us do on weekends. The friends felt as though they had contacted someone
someone, but they wanted to be sure, so they said, if you're here, give us a sign. They all stood there and nothing happened, which made them doubt the power and ability of the Ouija board. Just as they were beginning to laugh at the board, they received a sign that the entity was with them. This came in the form of lights flickering on and off for minutes at a time. It didn't stop here though. They also could hear footsteps stomping above them despite being the only ones home. Safe to say they were sufficiently spooked and apologized for ever doubting whatever entity they came into contact with. In our number two spot today, we have the following. This story starts out when this person's mother began to get interested in things like card reading and the occult, and she began trying to speak to spirits. One day she was using a Ouija board, and when the storyteller touched the planchette, it is said that it flew right out of his hand and smashed against the wall. This happened when he was a teenager, but since then, nothing has been the same. They explained that from then on, in the night, they could feel something looking at them from the darkest corner of their room, like some sort of shadowy figure. You can't really see because it's dark and it's nighttime but you know it's there. Throughout their life, even after moving to different homes, they have seen things in the places they live that seem to be following them anywhere they go. In our number one spot today, we have I See You. This story comes from a Reddit user called No Springs. One day they were at a friend's house having fun and goofing around, and they decided to bring out a Ouija board. They weren't getting very many results and weren't really taking it seriously, but then they got a message from the board saying, I can see you through the window. And then another after that that said, I can see you through his eyes. There was a small window in the basement room they were in, and through that window they could see the backyard, the driveway, and the woods that lay behind it. They continued to ask the spirit questions and ended up getting an answer that said, I'm under the car. Somehow they were able to muster up the nerve to go and check under the car with flashlights. When they looked, they found a huge black stray cat hissing. This obviously terrified them and they all ran back into the house as quickly as possible. At the exact moment they get back inside the house, all of the power shuts off, the lights go out, and it's completely dark. After that, it's safe to say that they stayed up all night, unable to sleep, and they definitely never played with a Ouija board again. Mm -hmm.